So let's say I want to add variations of chocolate chip cookies. Three of them, six of them, twelve of them. Under products on the left, let's go to variations. And the way this works is I have to create a variation set and then I create variants. Terminology already will be confusing. A variation set with variants. A variation set is what is the thing that I'm selling that can be of different denominations, let's say. And then what are the actual variations? Three of them, six of them, twelve of them. Variation sets and variants. So in my case, my variation, I could write here cookies. My variation set is cookies. Why did, I, why did I not write chocolate chip cookies? We need to think ahead. I can reuse this structure multiple times because I'm going to sell half a dozen chocolate chip cookies, half a dozen snickerdoodles, half a dozen key lime pie cookies, half a dozen of something. So I'm not going to create a variation set of chocolate chip cookies because this will display on screen. If I attach these variations to my snickerdoodles, it'll say snickerdoodles, chocolate chip cookies six at a time. That won't make sense. So I want to think of a term here that is the most generic so that I could apply it to multiple types of an item. I want to sell six or twelve chocolate chip cookies, six or twelve uh, vanilla cookies, six or twelve snickerdoodles, cookies. Um, I want to be even more generic. Batch. I'm going to sell these in batches. A batch of cookies. A batch of cupcakes. A batch of whatever. But what we will see is someone goes to the chocolate chip cookie and it'll chew and it'll say batch. And it'll have a selector. Three of them, six of them, twelve of them. Choose them in batches, in minimums. This is our variation set. This would be also sort of like, let's say I'm selling uh, shoes. Men's shoes, women's shoes. The variation set, men's shoes, women's shoes. The actual variants, small, medium, and large. So, for the moment, parent is new variation set. The name is batch. Slug will fill itself in. Description, you can do that. Variation price. So again, here's a default price. I already set one dollar for that other cookie, but it's also valuable here to set a basic price. My minimum amount of cookies that I will sell are three at a time. Three dollars. Just put a number three there. Exactly. I'm going to attach it. Very good point. I'm going to attach it to cookies in a moment. So, in my case, that may or may not be a good starting point, but I want to have some minimum value at least because I've seen a bug once in a while that a person selects to buy something, they never set, selected the variation, and suddenly the product was sold for zero dollars. So, you still want some minimum value just in case some times there might be a glitch, I still want to sell this at some minimum value. This is something for you to decide, but I think on ours we'll be okay with this. I'll click Add New Variation. At the top now it says, okay, batch. And yes, batch of cookies or batch of cupcakes or batch of whatever, but this is a batch. The details, the actual variants, three of them, six of them, twelve of them, now comes like this. Make sure you've created at least the, you know, the top <clears throat> parent. Now under parent, select batch three. Well, we'll say generically, half <clears throat> a dozen, six. One possible variation, one possible minimum is six at a time. Add variation. Um, 
make sure at the top that parent first of all says batch, and then right here I typed half a dozen. On the next uh, on the next screen, we'll see that as well. Um, this variant is half a dozen. Let's make now then a dozen, and then on another screen we will actually write. You know, we will actually set that to twelve, set it to six. Make sure this dozen is attached to the parent of batch. I could also be setting a price here. Again, if I was only dealing with batches of cookies, I could put a value here that that will always cost a certain amount. On, on the further screen, once we attach this to actual products, then we will set the real values and prices. Now let's say then, just add this variation, and then now I've got here, notice it's indented. Half a dozen and a dozen are related to batch. We'll do one more. Uh, quarter dozen. Which is three. Add new variation. Suddenly I'm blanking. That's how you spell dozen, right? I didn't, I didn't misspell it? I don't know why dozen suddenly looks weird to me. Yeah, dozen. Okay. So parent batch, quarter, half, full dozen. Okay. Let's attach these to the actual cookie that we made. Let's go back to products. Let's edit the chocolate chip cookie. Go back to edit your chocolate chip cookie, scroll down. Under variations, now there's something here. You can create variants and such here. It's much more cumbersome. I usually don't create variations on the spot here. I create them under the variation screen. This will list all possible variations. At the moment, I've created one. Batch. And if you click the triangle, I can say this kind of cookie will have a dozen minimum, or also half or a quarter. I can also just simply turn on batch, and all possible variants will activate. This cookie can be sold in, in 12, 6, or 3. But here's how we can set minimums for things. I create a variation and then I attach the variation um, that is my minimum. I want all of these possibilities. This cookie can be bought in these three configurations, these three, vari these three variants. Step one is I create the variants. Step two is I select them. Step three, well, step two is create the variants. So put create variant right there. And step three is I manage these. Once you, once you generate here, it should then jump you over to the Manage tab of the variations. And here is where I'm setting all of this detail that I want. I could set a picture for each individual variant. I could set a skew for each one. Notice it came through from, in my case, of $1 each because I had set $1 as the minimum price of the basic products. But I'm saying here now, okay, one quarter dozen is going to cost $3. Half a dozen, let's say, to entice people to spend more, $5. And one dozen will be, I don't know, $11. So in the system, when someone buys something, as we'll see here, and they've selected a quarter dozen, you will get a notification that says someone bought the quarter dozen cookies. So that's how you're setting, that's how you're knowing, I sold, I need to fulfill 
three cookies. The name of the variant also tells you how many are being sold. The price then we can set here individually. Price, sale price, we can play with that as well. I, I won't do that just yet. Maybe we can set also limited amount of quantities on stock and how much extra taxable amount. We can get as complicated as we want here. But for the moment, let's just say I set some prices. Save as save variations here. Let's say I have a lot of variations. Yes, it's cumbersome to go in and change so many things at once, but what you can do is select more than one of these and then under bulk actions select to edit more than one. That's going to save you the effort of doing it one at a time. You select more than one variation because what about if you're selling Mexican food and you're doing combos and you can do a combo with this and with this and with this and with this. You might have literally a hundred combos. And this is from real life experience. Our Texcoco client sells combos on the website and you can put this and that and this and that and there's so many variations literally a hundred combos. So to save our sanity, we select more than one of these and instead of <coughs> one by one by one, we select multiple ones, edit, apply, and we can select set prices quickly. <clears throat> I want to see what this looks like, so make sure you've clicked save variation and then go back to the top and click update top right click update and then visit site products page chocolate chip cookie product options batch please select this is saying before I select anything Prices start from $3. That was the minimum price that I put of the smallest price of the batch. And then if I am to select a dozen, it will then hone in to tell you $11. Half a dozen, quarter dozen. This might be a case where I might not want to have a quantity Field, a quantity field for this product. Right? If you go back to your product, I believe you can turn off quantity for this product. I don't want a quantity. I want them to choose one of these from the batch options. If you never start when you have this display, you can't change the quantity. If you can get one dozen the quantity now is one dozen to the dozen. Yeah. So if you have it this way and I put two twelve you'll get a hundred Exactly. Yeah, that's but if you don't have the quantity there, then you can't order two dozen. Can yes. Yes and no. If you don't have the quantity and you've got one dozen, add to cart. You would add it to cart again. If you but want twelve you dozen. Can order one cookie. No. In this case, there's no way to order one cookie because your only options are quarter, half, or full dozen. So I think No, because someone could put one dozen. I don't want one dozen, I want one cookie. So maybe make one more variant that is one cookie. Well, I'm saying if you don't want to sell single cookies. Mm. You was, you, I don't think using the batch, it seems like it would be better to still have the quantity since the quantity only refers to the batch number. Or else yeah. it would be strange to have to click at the cart yeah. like Mm -hmm. Yeah, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, you, you are right. You uh, you mix and match how you how this would work for you. In my case, I only want to sell full half and quarter dozens, but if I want to sell individual cookies, I could make a completely different product called single cookies. And on those, I have no batches, and then it's only on quantities. And that way I can get exactly four cookies if I want, because there's no none of that here. So there's different ways to accomplish it. Um, it's up to us to decide exactly how we want to set it, and the good news is that the plugin is pretty 
flexible, we can make variance, we can put quantity, we can set it how we want. Do you find your, your clients do that part? No, because they tell us what they want, and unless they know how to work with WordPress, to, we, you just saw right now it's a bit cumbersome to set variants and variations and all of that. They would usually tell us what they want, and we go in and set it up and plug it in and such, and then we would show them, okay, in the future, if you want to change your prices, you go back to your product, you edit your product, and then you go here to your variations, and you set your prices. So we, we might set the details of it, the defaults, and then we show them, here's how to change it in the future, and they are able to change it themselves. So in this case, I've got uh, a variation. There's no right or wrong way to set this. I tried to set it the most generic way, but we already kind of, you know, thinking ahead, batch. What if I wanted to attach this to batches of, of, of cupcakes? Cupcakes are not going to start off at a dollar each. Cupcakes are going to start off at a dollar fifty. So that's why I chose batch rather than cookies. Uh, but using that, that framework of, of batch, I could still attach that to cupcakes. And we saw that when we create products, when we create products and attach that same batch, that same structure of that variation, I can go in. And it doesn't matter if it's a dozen cookies or a dozen cupcakes, because I could go in here and start off my price of a default $4 per quarter dozen cupcakes and $3 per quarter dozen of cookies. So what I want to do then is, um, we've only had one break, but then that's already getting us close to the end of the day. What I want to do is give you a chance to play with this a little bit. I'm going to end the main lecture slightly early uh, because you have a lot to think about. We've created products, categories, tags, variations. I want you to explore this a little bit. I'm going to save a copy of my work in the network folder if you want it, but I'm going to end the main lecture slightly early. I, I'm not going to guide us through creating a backup copy like we've been doing every single time here. You try it now on your own, just like you've created, you've resurrected the site on your own pretty well. I'm going to end the main lecture here. You maybe make some more variations of products and categories. Play with it. And we'll do some lab time. And uh, when we come back next time, I want to talk about coupons, I want to talk about further organization. Right now, all my products are found under products. First of all, I don't like that they're called products. I want this to be called like the shop or the bakery. We'll do that next time. I also want, instead of all products visible at once, I want like a drop-down button that only focuses on cupcakes, only focuses on cookies. We'll do that next time. That's another big topic to talk about. So we'll end the main lecture at this point. General questions at this point? Yes. And when are you thinking about child themes? We'll, we'll uh, work in some of that as well for, for child themes. Yeah. We'll wrap up some concepts of the actual products, which isn't much more. Talk about child themes, advanced editing, and talk about um, whatever else is on the syllabus about publishing it to a real server and such. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the moment. We'll um, have some lab time. Now.